Then on the 15th of April, a strange development occurred. While nothing appeared to grow different in kind, there was certainly a very terrible difference in degree, and Dr. Willette somehow attaches great significance to the change. The day was Good Friday, a circumstance of which the servants made much, but which others quite naturally dismiss as an irrelevant coincidence. Late in the afternoon, young Ward began repeating a certain formula in a singularly loud voice, at the same time burning some substance so pungent that its fumes escaped over the entire house. The formula was so plainly audible in the hall outside the locked door that Mrs. Ward could not help memorizing it as she waited and listened anxiously, and later on she was able to write it down at Dr. Willett's request. It ran as follows, and experts have told Dr. Willett that it is very uh, that its very close analog can be found in the mystic writings of Alephus Levi, that cryptic soul who crept through a crack in the forbidden door and glimpsed the frightful vistas of the void beyond. Per Adonai Elohim, Adonai Jehovah, Adonai Sabbath, Metraton U Agla Methon, Verbon. Pythonicum Mysterium Salamandra Conventus Silborum Antra Gnamorum Damonia Coeli God Almansen Gabor Jehosua Evam Sari Eth Natmik Veni 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 This had been going on for two hours without change or intermission when over all the neighborhood a pen demoniac howling of dogs set in. The extent of this howling could be judged from the space it received in the papers the next day. But to those in the ward household it was overshadowed by the odor which instantly followed it. A hideous, all-pervasive odor, which none of them had ever smelt before or have smelt since. In the midst of this mephetic flood, there came a very perceptible flash, like that of lightning, which would have been blinding and impressive, but for the daylight around. And then was heard the voice that no listener can ever forget because of its thunderous remoteness, its incredible depth, and its eldritch similarity to Charles Ward's voice. It shook the house, and it was clearly heard by at least two neighbors above the howling of the dogs. Mrs. Ward, who had been listening in despair outside her son's locked laboratory, shivered as she recognized its hellish import, for Charles had told her of its evil fame in dark, dark books and of the manner in which it, uh, it thundered according to the Fenner letters. Above the doomed Paltuxet farmhouse, on... The night of Joseph Kerwin's annihilation, there was no mistaking that nightmare phrase, for Charles had described it too vividly in the old days when he had talked, frankly, of his Kerwin investigations, and yet it was only this fragment of an archaic and forgotten language. Dies mies. Jeschet buena. Do esef duvema. Dies 